coming, and it's going to come as science, and it's something that people will demand once they see it work, and there's nobody can stop it. It's not going to come to the world as a philosophy, it's not going to come to the world as religion, it's going to come to the world as science, and these standards have to be acceptable to science. It's about getting out to the general public. It's about it being there so the people who have ears to hear will hear and people who have eyes to see will see. But when you understand that a superconductor literally has around it a Meissner field and it doesn't allow any external magnetic field to enter the sample and therefore it runs perpetually. The superconductor when it started literally runs forever and ever and ever and ever. It's billions and billions of atoms acting like one single atom, running forever. It is a very real sense the life force needs to be discovered by science in the same way that Newton discovered gravity. I'm looking at this as sounding a bell that school is about to begin. Our family was involved in agriculture for years, and I was a cotton farmer. I had built my business up in the 1960s and 70s. Uh, we were actually farming, you know, extensive land holdings in Yuma Valley and in the, the Phoenix area. The total operation that, was, that the family farmed was about 7,000 acres, and it was primarily cotton. But I got involved in a farm down in what was called Agua Caliente, Arizona, which is actually in the Arizona desert out between Gila Bend and Yuma, right out in the middle of the desert. And it, was, it actually got its name from the Agua Caliente Hot Springs right there at the mountain next to my farm. They have a hot springs, an old resort, where in the 1920s and 30s the railroad trains would have to stop to get steam water for the steam engines. And they actually had a resort there where the tourists would get off and go bathe themselves in the hot springs and regenerate, rejuvenate their bodies, supposedly. Well, I had a 1,200-acre farm that I bought down there that had really serious problems with what we call black alkali. Uh, there were several fields down towards the Gila River that were really, really serious black alkali. And this looks like chocolate in the soil. And for you people back here on the eastern part of the United States, you have no idea what I'm talking about because you have the opposite problems. But we have, it's a chocolatey, crunchy material that's actually salt that builds up on the, on the tops of our soils. And when you plant, like for example, cotton, the cotton will actually germinate and get up about five, six inches tall and just will be stunted. It won't grow any further. And you put water on the soil and the water just beads up and stands on the soil as if there was actually oil in the soil. It will not go into the soil itself well and be retained in the soil. So at the time, years ago, there was a big copper mine down in Ajo, Arizona, just south of Ala Caliente, and they were giving away sulfuric acid if you would come down and pick it up. And so I was paying truckers to go down and haul truckloads of 93%, 92 to 93% sulfuric acid from Ajo down to my farm. And I was injecting this acid on this land where I had this black alkali problem. And we were putting about 30 tons to the acre of 93% sulfuric acid. Okay, a little does a little good, a lot ought to do a lot. <laughs> there was actually so much acidity, and of course sulfuric acid, when you say 93%, it's not really as corrosive as it is at like 50 or 60%, because it doesn't have water. But you inject it in the soil, and then as you start irrigating that soil, and the water would go across the ground, as it hit the ripper marks where the sulfuric acid went in the soil, you would see frothing and foaming and sudsing as, <laughs> as the water was going across the field. And uh, this was my int first introduction to actually making soluble salts. Now what we were doing is taking black alkali and adding sulfuric acid and making sodium sulfate which then now is considered a white alkali, which then is water soluble and will leach out of the soil root zone of the plant. And then you can irrigate it and wash it out. It's kind of like the analogy of putting soap on your hands 
to get the grease off. You can keep running water on there and it won't, won't get the grease off, but if you put a little soap in there, now you can get the grease off. Well, that's what was happening when we put the sulfuric acid on our sodi ground. Then I, a few years later, got involved. And we well, actually had Jimmy Carter become our president, and he was just like the president we have today. He was really a fellow that thought you could just spend and spend and spend and spend money. Fortunately, his idea was tax and spend, and the current president says spend and tax. And so, uh, but one of the problems we were facing was tremendous inflation was going on at that time. And we were looking at 8, 10% inflation every year. The cost of everything, every year is just going up dramatically. And people knowing this was going to happen was, were in thinking this was going to happen in advance. So they were pricing everything higher and higher all the time. And uh, I got involved in thinking that it was possible that I could go into gold mining. Now, this is just a whim. It really, I never intended for this to have to make money. I figured I had caterpillar bulldozers, I had earth movers, I had road graders, I had, you know, uh, front end loaders all on the farm anyway. And so I had the equipment I could go up and start moving ore. And I found out there's a process called heap leaching where you actually take black plastic and lay out on, on a pad and you put all this ore on top of the black plastic pad and you put rainbird sprinklers up there just like you use on your lawn and you run a cyanide water solution over the ore and it dissolves out the gold and it runs out on the plastic pad in the settling pond and then you pump it back up and over and pump it back up and over and it keeps just running the cycle for days and days and days and what happens is the cyanide will dissolve the gold bring the gold out in solution, you run that solution through activated charcoal and then back out and over the heap leach again. And so you're taking the gold out onto the carbon in this cycle. Anyway, it's not important that you learn how to heap leach cyanide gold. It's just that that's what I was doing. And the concept of leaching a metal out of, of, of a dirt or a rock substance, and in Arizona our dirt is actually broken down rock, we don't really have topsoil like they have around here in, in these soils. And so I, it was just seemed the same thing to me. It was really natural that I get involved in this. I just encountered some problems though when I started trying to recover the gold out of the activated carbon. When we tried to strip the gold out and fire the material and melt it into a metal, we had stuff that wasn't gold recovering with our gold. Now, the gold was there, but it was this other stuff that just refused to go away. It just followed with the gold all through the system. And I just became frustrated in the recoveries because it was actually, the, when this material caused a problem in the fire assay, it caused much of the gold to be lost. And I said, what in the heck is this? And I'd heard about tellurium and things like this, that people had problem in, in gold mining. And I said, you know, I gotta find out what this problem material is. Well, um, one of the fellows that was doing, doing fire assays for me handed me a book. And uh, this book, I, I don't know if we can go, no. Uh, this book was actually the published, let's go to the, the next page, yeah. That's it. Back, 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 back one page. This is the book that he handed me. It was the, called The Analytical Chemistry of the Platinum Group Elements. Now, for you people who really want to get involved in understanding the chemistry of the platinum group elements, this is actually, the work was, was written by the Soviet Academy of Sciences. In the Soviet Union, they have the Vernatsky Institute for Precious Metal Research which is a division of the Soviet Academy of Sciences. And in the Soviet Union, they fund government money to go to research on the chemistry of this industry because it's a very important part of their income and source of money in the Soviet Union. And so they, were, they funded this research as a governmental funded research for, for you know, 40, 50 years. And they're very proud of the research and so they published this in Russian. Well, I, not knowing how to read Russian, the Israeli program for scientific translations actually got the information and translated it into English. And so you can order this book.
from the Israeli program for scientific translations. And the whole book, and this is a book about this thick, is nothing but the analytical chemistry of the platinum group elements. Now let me tell you, anybody who wants to delve into that book, be prepared for a battle. <laughs> in this book, you will find all sorts of information. It comes, there's actually six platinum group elements, and it comes at them from all aspects, including wet chemistry, including spectroscopy, including separation systems, including ion exchange resins, including solvent extraction, you know, everything. And from the average person, you don't want to go there because it is a holy heck to wade through, really. You've got to really be a technical person. But I decided I've got to wade into this thing. <laughs> it can't be that bad, so, I, and, I, and I want to solve the problem. Well, in the book, I got through to page, uh, you know, back, back where you were, no, yeah, right, that's it, okay. In page uh, 534, the Soviet journal has a procedure there for the analysis of lead alloys containing the platinum group elements. And it was really interesting what they were doing. They were actually taking the sample, placing it on a carbon electrode, striking an arc from another carbon electrode, and then burning the sample. Now, 